In today's video, you're gonna learn how to make a low poly animated glow in the dark character using X particles and Cinema 4D. Let's go. Hey, it's Nick here again from Grayscale Gorilla, helping you make better renders in less time. Now, before we get started today, I wanted to remind you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you haven't seen our intro to Cinema 4D series over on our website, I'm gonna link it up in the description below and also try to make a card. If you're looking to learn Cinema 4D, we think it's one of the best places to go check it out. All right, let's get into today's tutorial. It's all about making a cool glow in the dark character. We're gonna use X particles. We're gonna use motion capture data, we're gonna use Cinema 4D. And now I wanted to also say, if you haven't seen part one of this series, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you watch that video. That'll be linked up as well in the description. And in part one, we go over how to find some motion capture data and how to import it into Cinema 4D. And that's where we're gonna to start today. So let's head on in and let's go. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and let's get some X particles in our scene and let's start making some really cool effects using X particles and some motion capture data. This will be fun. All right, let's uh, first of all add our X particles system to our scene. This is just to organize our X particles data. And then uh, uh, the next thing we need is a generator. So let's go to our generator objects and go to emitter. And our emitter, what we really want is for this emitter to emit particles all over the object, all over the, the dancer itself, okay? And the way we do that is we go into our emitter, we go to object, uh, tab here and then under emitter shape we want we want object and we need to drag in what object we want to emit off of so in this case I want the alpha surface that's all this blue metal looking stuff here so okay this is cool in itself we have a bunch of particles all being born on our um, on our character and in fact if we go to a mission and just turn down the speed turn off the speed you're gonna see we kind of end up with like a point cloud of, of data here of everywhere that the dancer uh, moved. And in fact, if we kind of crank up our birth rate a little bit higher and get some really cool effects and maybe there's a little bit of movement, right? Um, this is kind of the fun thing about X particles is it's so experimental that uh, we could just play like this for hours. Um, the look we're gonna go for today is quite a lot different. What we're trying to build is kind of a geometry of um, of a character. So it looks kind of like a, a sci-fi character or something like that. So how do we do that? Well, let's um, first of all, tell our grid that we don't want it to continue to emit particles. We just want some base particles to start. So how do we do that? Well, on our emission, instead of rate, we wanna go to shot. Shot is gonna say, I just want you to shoot particles just for one frame, and that's one frame by default. And I want you to shoot 500 particles, okay? That's it. So now let's click play and see what that looks like. Okay, so now look at frame one, it shot off those particles, but now they, they continue to move. They're not sticking to the object. So how do we get that going? First of all, we don't want any speed. We wanna to go to our object. And we want to click this button. It's this easy with X particles. Stick particle to source object. Click. That's it. Bink. Okay, so now we have our particles and they're sticking to our original geometry. Okay, so now what can we do? How do we build those that kind of line geometry that you saw in the demo? Well, what we're first gonna do is turn off our surface and our joints. So with that, I'm gonna hold down option or alt on my keyboard, and I'm gonna click these little traffic lights twice, each one. And that's just gonna remove it from the scene. Um, it's still there as geometry. We still need it in the scene because we we want it to, uh, we want our emitter to still look at this surface, but we don't wanna see it when we hit render. Okay, and now we don't see anything. Instead, what we want is to use this object right here. I want you to go into the XB system, go to generator, go to trails. Trails is gonna automatically add the XP emitter as the emitter here. And that's good because that's what we want. And look at what it does by default. By default, we get trails of everywhere that this character goes. This is another cool look that we could experiment with. Um, that's just the fun of X particles. But today, we're not gonna use that, that trails object to make actual trails. We're gonna use it uh, for something a little bit different. Let's try straight sequence at first. Straight sequence basically connects each one of our particles in order as they're born. 
and this is a really cool look as well. This is a really fun way to kind of animate this geometry. Let's look at another one. Let's go back and look at um, all points to all points would be a ton of geometry. In fact, I just want to turn this down, turn our emission down to like 100 just so we could play around with some of these crazy ones without, uh, you know, breaking or, or waiting too long. Uh, really, it doesn't break very often, but sometimes it takes a while to calculate. So we're just going to turn it down just to get a general idea and then we can turn it up later. So straight sequence, that's cool. Let's go all points to all points. That's a ton, right? Every point tied to every other point. Let's get, get you an interesting look. What else do we got here? Nearest by index. This is fun. This is actually only making one um, one strand per uh, per connection. So that's kind of a fun look. Maybe that's a way that we could start to build a, a little character. Uh, what's another one here? Um, nearest by index, uh, nearest by distance. This one's great because you can turn up, um, uh, nope, you can't turn it up on this one. It says all within distance, we could do that. So now we could turn down our distance and now we're starting to get that look. This one's fun, let's try this. Now we have this little cage of a character, okay? So we're gonna keep experimenting with this, but right now what I wanna see is what this looks like because when I hit render, I got nothing. I got invisible uh, uh, joints here that don't render. I got invisible lines here that don't render. What what What's going on? Well, I need a, go to your create, shader, X particles material. I need one of those. And then I wanna drag it onto the trail, not the emitter, but onto the, 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 the tracer. And that's gonna give us our geometry. So now it's, it's, it, it's tracing each one of those lines. Um, couple things I don't like about this. This default green color, super easy to see in the viewport. Love it that it's a default, but I don't want it to render green. So I want to go to color. I uh, don't want random color. I want single color and white's fine just for now. And now let's go to size and just shrink those lines up like real small, 10%. That's much better. Okay, so this is going to look really interesting as it animates and we can get a preview of that. So now we're talking about render previews here. I don't mind this 800 by 600, we'll keep it super small. And here's a little trick, I go all frames, and then I don't say to, to 318, I just say to like frame 30, okay? Now, uh, when I hit render, it's gonna render frame zero to frame 30, pretty small, 800 by 600, with whatever camera we got. So let's go back to the, the start here. Let's hit render and see what we get. The reason I set that up like that is so that we get a very fast render that we could just see what it looks like. Right, so now we have this object moving around. And that's kind of an interesting look, okay? Let me zoom this in a little bit so you can see it. It's an interesting look. One of the things it's doing is as uh, geometry or as particles get close to each other, they're making connections that they didn't previously have. So you could see it in the arm right here. In fact, you could slow this down in the viewport just so you could see it. Uh, as as the particles get closer, they're adding more geometry. And that's an interesting look. I think that might be a, a, its own look, uh, uh, like in its own time. The best thing is about X particles and about experimenting and Cinema 4D and all this stuff is you can find something interesting you didn't plan on and go down that route. Like we could, we could change the whole thing and make it based on this look instead of the original. But for those of you who clicked on the thumbnail that made the original look, let's make sure that we cover that and then we can experiment. So where, what I ended up using is if you go to uh, back to your X particles trail, you can go to cluster. Now cluster, I'm just gonna go forward one frame on it. I'm gonna hit G on my keyboard and cluster is gonna make these really cool looking clusters. And I'm gonna adjust it by saying this cluster distance. Okay, and I'm gonna make these these clusters feel a little bit closer together. Now, to me, there's just not enough points to really make interesting clusters because this doesn't look like a human as much. It could, let's do a quick render actually. Boom. That's what's nice about setting this render settings up is you can just see what that looks like. That's kind of interesting. Maybe we combine these, I don't know. To me, we need some more points. So let's go back to view, back to our emitter, and instead of 100, let's go to 500 uh, points. Let's go back and forward a frame. You're going to see we have ton more geometry. Boom. Now we could go into our trail and turn down those cluster distances. Let's do another render right there. That is pretty 
Interesting. I like that one too. Well, now what? What are we going to do? Um, let's try turning these down a little bit. And I would say finding a good balance between geometry, having enough geometry, dunk, but not having it too dense. Like, yeah, maybe that's too dense. Let's, let's experiment a little bit with the size. Let's go down a little bit more with how thin we can make this. And I think too, if we don't make it pure white, okay? So here's a little experiment. If we don't make it pure white, okay, it's gonna start to add a little bit of, of uh, overlap. And I think this might look actually a little bit better. So let's tone down our, our gray here. Now let's go to illumination. Now, right now we have flat illumination. We could do diffuse if we add some lights in the scene. We may experiment with that a little bit. Um, but here's here's the thing. One of the things that we could do uh, in here is make it self-illuminated, and that'll come in handy when we start to add a light. In fact, let's just add a light right now so we could start to experiment. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to move it forward in the scene. So let's just go back, kind of put a light up and to the right there just so we're consistent if you're following along with the other tutorials. And let's see now what this looks like. Okay, so that didn't affect it too much, but that's because our light doesn't have any shadows on it. So let's go to our light, go to shadow, soft shadow. And now we're gonna start to see a little bit of shadowing right there. You can see it there. You can see a little bit of it right here. But what else can we do to kind of make this stand out? Well, we can blend our, our colors together. So instead of just having this one solid color, what I really want is for every time one of these strands overlaps another one, I want it to screen on top of it, or actually add. Didn't know we didn't have screen in there, but add's gonna give us a similar effect. See how much brighter that got right inside there? Just a little bit, but those little, little subtle hints are gonna help a lot. So now, where do we go from here? Let's see what it looks like upside down. Boom, that looks cool. That looks nice actually. Okay, let's keep experimenting because that's what X-Particles is all about. Let's go back to uh, nearest by distance and let's start to turn this down and see what that gives us. Now nearest by distance, I think might be closer, uh, closer to what we're looking for because this is that kind of low poly geometry look that we're that we're going for in fact let's go back to our color and get that really dark blue color this might really start to give us some cool looks that's cool that i like let's go ahead and make it a little bit brighter boom that is nice it's like a it's like a constellation or something in a, in a book very fun Okay, so now, um, how do we also add points to each individual dot? And um, what we really need to do is just create a new uh, uh, X particles material. X particles material, boom, drag it onto the emitter this time, hit render. Now you got a bunch of green dots with all the, all the blue lines. A couple things we don't like about this. The green color, actually, it's not so bad. It's almost like nighttime green you know it's always you know like nighttime glow in the dark stuff it's almost glow in the dark green but we're gonna change it i'm gonna go to color i'm gonna say uh let's go random color or no let's go random from gradient and in this case i'm gonna use like a pink and then maybe we pull some of that green back into it see if we can get some weird kind of gradients in between those colors that's that's fun that's fun. Let's go to size, shrink that down as well. Boom. And I'm also going to add some variation to our size. So these particles are different, different uh, sizes as we go. So let's go back frame one here. See what that looks like. That looks really fun. I like that. Uh, okay. What else do we need to complete this render? Well, I think now the lines are, are a little bit too thin. So I'm going to thicken up our blue lines. Boom. Maybe our particles are a little bit too large. That's fun. 
Okay, and now we need a background and the floor and all that stuff. Now, the look that I got was made with our uh, HDRI Studio rig. And what this allows you to do is quickly add backgrounds, floors, and reflections. Now, in this case, we're not going to use any reflection. We can just turn that down. But the floor is the important part here. I want to add uh, this nice little glow in the background, a little bit of a blue color, kind of a super dark blue, actually, and then a black on the outside edges. And you can see now what that gives us, a little bit of a glow, a little bit of shadow, right? It, it's giving us something for the, our lights to play off of. I want to darken it a little bit. That's a little too bright for me, but that feels better. Now we have our floor shadow. We have our object. And what's really nice, too, is we can instantly add a reflective floor, um, get that nice, glossy, reflective floor look with our HDR Studio rig. And you can see now we can set this up. We need a camera. Right, I'm gonna zoom in something like a 70 millimeter here so it feels like we're on stage, right? You kind of zoom in to our character. We're gonna frame it up, make sure it's not clipping outside of our, our boundaries here or anything. That feels really good to me. We got glossy floor, we got our particles, we got it all good to go. What else do we need? Well, let's do that quick render that we did, just the 10 frames there, or just the 30 frames, just to see what it looks like. And you can see now, of course, when we add some, you know, reflective floor and all those extra particles, it's going to take a little bit, a uh, few extra seconds to render. But let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We may want to move the floor down just a bit to make sure we're not clipping anything. We don't want to clip any particles, but I think that looks really fun, really cool um, style of, of, uh, of character here all made with X particles. And now again, don't forget to experiment with this stuff because X particles does so much. That's just one really simple look. And we, we actually went through a bunch of different looks to get here. So uh, that's it uh, from cinema. All right, thanks again for watching everybody. I got a quick question of the day for you. What character effect do you want us to break down in an upcoming Grayscale Gorilla tutorial? If you have an idea, we'd love to see it in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out our intro to Cinema 4D series as well. If you're learning Cinema 4D, we think it's one of the most robust and complete ways to learn as much Cinema 4D as possible in the shortest amount of time. We're gonna link it up here. We're also gonna link it in the description below. That's it from us. We have plenty more videos to watch right now. So if you're on YouTube, find something on the side from us and we'd love to see you in the next video right now. See you soon. Bye everybody. If you, if, can I raise, if I raise a roof too hard, I think I, I go down. Yeah. I think I need a haircut. I think I need a haircut. Do I need a haircut? No. No.